the gaming and entertainment capital of the world. Fabulous Las Vegas, home of the 2019 Barbazol PGA Tour Finals here at Red Rock Lane. We've already turned in the finals out of group one. Now it's time to do the same in group number two. After day one of four qualifying games, a lone lefty, young superstar Jacob Buckriff has a lead, so he wastes the top of the step ladder in what will be a race to a two-point match. First reigning player of the year, Andrew Anderson takes on Marshall Kent. The winner matches up with two-time major champ Anthony Simons. And the winner of Group 2 takes on EJ Tackett in the championship match at stake. A PBA Tour title and big prize money. Welcome back, bowling fans to Vegas. As the PBA Tour Finals continue on CBS Sports Network, Dave Ryan alongside Randy Peterson, my Hall of Fame broadcast partner, rejoined by fellow Hall of Famer Chris Barnes in a moment. EJ Tack, an impressive, wins group one. Mm -hmm. He's off to the championship show. Now we have group two. Four great bowlers, only one can emerge. Yeah, and only one stood out, and that was Jacob Buttriff. He led the other three players in his group by 136 pins. I mean, nobody was close to Jacob. And quite honestly, Dave, I think the other seven players in the tour finals all had their eyes on this man. They were all wondering what kind of ball reaction Jacob Buttriff was going to have on this Mark Roth oil pattern because they know that there's only one lefty. And if Jacob Butchiff has a good look, there's one thing we know for certain, that kid can strike. The Super Southpaw's got three titles this year going for number four and joined live now lane level by Chris Barnes. Thank you, Dave. Here with yesterday's dominating performer. Is there anything different today that you saw in practice that you didn't see yesterday? Well, I saw the lanes were definitely a little bit similar um, with the TV lights uh, as the day goes on. You never know how the lanes are going to break down, but I'm just going to see what I need to see before I bowl my match and give it the best I got. And then anybody you want to play in the final? Uh, honestly, like all three of these guys, when they find something, uh, we all know that they could strike. So uh, I'm just going to see what I need to see for myself and uh, just go out and give it the best match I got. Thank you, Jacob. Back to the expert commentary in the booth. All right, Chris, when we come back, it's time to see who wins group two and move one step closer to taking home the 2019 PBA Tour Finals. Our first group two semifinal, Anderson Kent next. It is time to bowl for Red Rock Lanes. Let's meet our bowlers of our event master of ceremonies, Mike Jakubowski. From Holly, Michigan, our number four seed in group two, is the holder of two PBA Tour titles, including the 2018 USBC Masters. He is the reigning PBA Player of the Year, making his first appearance in the PBA Tour Finals, Andrew Anderson. <laughs> Hailing from Yakima, Washington, and now living in Las Vegas, our number three seed in Group 2 holds four career PBA titles. The 2014 PBA Rookie of the Year finished fifth in last year's PBA Tour Finals, Marshall Kent. He is the youngest player to win a PBA major when he did it at the 2016 USBC Masters at the age of 19. Hailing from Little Elm, Texas, our number two seed in Group 2 has six PBA Tour titles at the age of 22, Anthony Simonson. The top seed in Group 2 has seven PBA titles, including three this year. He tied a PBA record by being the number one seed in three consecutive tournaments. From Tempe, Arizona, Jacob Butra. There the bowlers, Group 2. Here are the conditions, Randy. 42 feet, Hall of Fame. Hall of Famer Mark Roth who this pattern's named after, no secrets. Players can go straight, they can move in and hook it, but the big difference, Jacob Butcher is gonna be doing that. He's the only one on that side, we talked about it, in the open. Overall leader qualifying of the eight bowlers here at the PBA Tour Finals. Group one has been determined and the winner is EJ Tackett. He'll take on the winner of this group. When the dust settles, only two remaining for our championship show, we start Step ladder bowling with Marshall Kent. Young star from Yakima now lives in Vegas. And living large in the 1-3 pocket to start the match. And there's that straighter shot. And I wouldn't see any reason why double-A Andrew Anderson wouldn't play the same type of line to the pocket.
Holly, Michigan, not far from Flint. Six seed in this event. Reigning player of the year starts his day high. And well, in the end, just a 10 pin. Ringing 10. <laughs> nice. Okay, not. Yeah, well, it's very fortunate here because three, six, nine, ten, not so good. Just the ten pin, way better. Qualifying was tough for Andrew. There's the ten pin. Average two hundred three point two five, eight thirteen for four games, and includes a one seventy game. It's a big begin qualifying for him. Missed the ten pin. Actually, sorry, he missed two 10 pins in qualifying. But he told us it's a new day now. Ready to make adjustments and make a run. That's off the mark, though. One, two, two ten. ten. Uh, two, four, ten, excuse me. Standing here for Andrew. Yeah. Well, not the start Andrew was looking for, I can promise you that. High on the right lane and then two, four, ten, light on the left lane. Drops the four, two up, and an early open and an early lead for Marshall Kent. His four games in qualifying, uh, nothing real impressive there. But I, I don't think it really speaks about how well he actually bowled. His pin carry wasn't very good. Works with coach Mike Jazz now. Every chance he gets. Looks to continue a good start and will. That's a feel good moment for Marshall Kent. Like Andrew Anderson, some struggles in qualifying. Averaging just over 205 in the four games. Hey, Dan. Back. Let's go to Chris Martins. I was just going to say that. Gentlemen, I. From what I see, I mean, Marshall spent a lot of time fraction to the right and, and more direct than he did yesterday, but still uh, a different general approach to what he had. While well, Andrew seems to be doing pretty much the same thing that he did yesterday, which didn't work, and I'm surprised that he hasn't looked a little further right or tried to do something else that uh, that's significantly different than the yesterday's strategy. So big advantage, Marshall Kent, obviously through score already. Hey, Chris. The shot that Andrew threw on the left lane looked like it looked like it was farther right than where he played yesterday, and it went light. Yeah, I don't think he actually meant to throw it that far right, which is the deal. I think Andrew, of all the players, is able to play the straightest, uh, straighter than Bill, and I expected him to go take a chance and go out there and see if he could run the ladder playing away from the rest of the crew. Anderson in recovery mode. He looked down at his footwork there near the foul line. Well, he does strike for the first time coming off of the open in his third frame. I'll tell you what, it, it doesn't matter where you're going to play. You, you better figure out a way once you get in that title match to shoot 240 or 50 against Jacob Butcher. Fact. <laughs> Arsenal for Andrew coming off a severe ligament tear in his finger that happened at the Worlds in Hong Kong right as he was being named. 2018 Player of the Year. It's an amazing story. Chaos Black. Yeah. So Chris Barnes, right zone, wrong ball. Come on, man. Oh, so Can't hear him. I think I think that's probably spot on. I think, like we're seeing from the from the uh, the first round of matches, that there's more push down lane on that left lane. It hooks earlier, but it's tighter down lane. You have to get it in front of you without it hooking early. And folks, just keep in mind that we did re-oil after our last show. So these four players in group two get to bowl on the fresh oil pattern and then break them down in practice. And they get the same amount of practice as group one did. And of course, the players have been kind of practicing on and off since about nine o'clock this morning. Pacific time. Marshall Kent tries to stay perfect. Does. So Chris, 
it's same kind of location as Andrew Anderson, but yet his ball's coming off the spot much harder. Well, 125 RPMs more will do that for you, for sure. And this is Marshall's version of it. He's really getting up the back of it. That that controls the back end of the lane for him, but that extra rev rate's making it pick up in mid lane where Andrews is pushing by it. Gotcha, good point. Marshall Kent, guys, the first four strikes in this match should hear any other player on today's show roll a perfect game. Everyone in America can receive a free game of bowling courtesy of Go Bowling to claim your free game. Simply head to the Go Bowling website, GoBowling.com, register for the Go Bowling Free America promotion, and the roll continues here for Marshall Kent. How about five in a row? How about this, Dave? If he bowls 300, can I have your free game? Yes. Thank you. Glad you have my free game. Just this once. Well, I know you won't use it. I'll use it. No, you're not going bowling. All right, I'll go bowling with you. How's that? That'd be great. Okay. Back to Anderson in a huge, huge hole. Fifth frame works on a spare and does strike. And the red hot Marshall Kent joined by Chris. Marshall, what did you change today strategy wise from, from the qualifying rounds? Well, I think yesterday I tried to manipulate my ball reaction with my hand and try to get it to roll earlier with my hand, but today we decided to go with a little more surface, more surface than I thought I would need, and just be aggressive with my ball speed. And I think the extra surface makes it so I can throw a little harder and get away with it. And I think mean, that's been the key to creating the right angle to carry today. Great start so far. All right, thanks. Good breakdown, CB. Thanks for that. And we love the access this year at the PBA Tour Finals. Ball change for Anderson. Steps up, we're going to strike. And misses that pocket. Leaves a 10 pin. As we head toward the midway point of this match. Perfect so far for Marshall. Little or no ball reaction on that left lane for Andrew Anderson. There's a 10 pin. Six up, six down. Marshall Kent trying for a perfect game. Got five strikes. Looks for the front six when we return to Vegas. Look at the lead for Marshall Kent. Front five, 55 pin advantage on Andrew Anderson in our first match of Group 2 semifinals. Back to Chris. These shows get by so fast. Andrew, what do you have to do here to, to uh, put, put a little bit of pressure on Marshall? Uh, throw the rest of them. It's the simplest answer. Uh, Marshall has a uh, very good ball reaction. Uh, I don't. So uh, I better throw a double here real quick and see if anything can change. How are you going to do that? Uh, I thought my ball change there was pretty good. Uh, I, I didn't see that the left lane was tighter or that much tighter. I thought they were both pretty good shots. So I'm just going to make a move on the uh, left lane and hopefully throw a good one on the right lane. All right. Good luck. Chris, thanks. Great insight. Looking for the front six, Marshall Kent. Whoa! I had no idea we were on. Ah. Wow, four through the middle. There goes a the perfect game, Randy. And not just an easy pickup here for a spare, a lot to cover. He's got to get the ball over into here, throw that three pin into the four seven, and have the ball cover that back to the nine pin. Can't kick it across deck for the 4-7. Didn't cut oh, it enough. Open frame, Randy, after the front five. That's a game changer. Yeah, but it's not just an open frame. It's four and then four. So it's an open frame and you lose count, so it's like two open frames in one. Arsenal for Marshall. IQ Tour. Twenty pin swing on that open frame. Susan Kent is here, Marshall's mom. So glad to hear about his dad recovering. I'll tell you that story in a moment. Hook. It, did. it does. Dad Jim back home in Washington recovering from brain surgery. So glad he's all right. Yeah. Darn. Yeah, Jim, well wishes sent your way, and I've met Jim right, before. Buddy. In fact, I want to say the last time I met him was, it may have been in Vegas. But Jim, we, uh, we're glad to hear you're, you're doing much better. Recent surgery and back home now. Recovering, all the best. Andrew Anderson, we heard with Chris a moment ago, gonna have to make some big changes. Dave, and uh, 
Max scored two, Max scored 225 for him and 260 for Marshall, but he's got to find a way to string some strikes and give Marshall Ken a little something to think about. There you see again the Max score. The math was correct for a change. Andrew told us pre-PBA Tour Finals that his mental focus is just where it wanted to be coming off the finger injury. <laughs> Little help. Every pin down into the pit. Timeout ready for our Columbia 300 fun fact. 10 of the last 14 majors on the PBA Tour have been won by bowlers competing in this year's Barbizol PBA Tour Finals. That's a great fact. It's a major star power out here in Vegas. Yeah. Well, it certainly helps your cause when you're trying to make the invitationals and all the other, you know, all the other stuff that, that goes along with the regular touring schedule. But this Marshall guy, I wonder, if, I wonder when he's ever going to win a major. Yeah, he's got four titles in his career, no majors yet. 26 years old, sixth year on tour. Wow, dialed into the one-three pocket. And all 10 back, those pins had no chance. Hey, Chris, what happened with the uh, shot where Marshall went four through the middle? Well, as you know, Randy, you've been on a ton of shows. Sometimes that hardest shot to throw is the first one out of the commercial break. You sit around for three, three, four minutes before you get to throw one. And I think you just, you know, you just got it in a little slow and it just jumped off of it with that much rev rate. L listen, Chris, listen, if, if he was as old as you, I get that. He's only 26. I mean, come on. <laughs> Chris, by the way, made 87 shows. Has made 87 shows. 19 titles. Look out. To 10. Now things get interesting. Barnes made 87 shows. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. Yeah, and, and so it's, it's kind of a, a goofy game for Marshall. He starts off perfect and then four through the middle and then comes back with a double and then it's light to 10. Looks like he's seeing some of that same down lane carry down that we saw uh, in group one that consistently this left lane is hooking a little more in the front as all the players say, but the tightness down lane is surprising them pretty quickly. Ah, the matches. Oh boy, he whiffed there looking for the 210 conversion on the split. The count's important there. So that, that's a mistake there. He can be shut out now if he gets one he would have been 196 and could not have been shut out. Andrew Anderson can strike out in the ninth and 10th frame, shoot 225. The best Kent can shoot now is 224. Huge mistake, wow. not getting at least one at least one, exactly. All right, now foundation time here for the reigning player of the year. Gotta get back to greatness. Yes. The shots like that, come on. That yeah, might just happen. Nine pin deficit now. It was once 55 pins in this match. Think about what that does to a player's psyche. And I, Barnes, I hope you're listening in. So here, here is, here's Andrew Anderson. Basically feels like he's been left for dead. Marshall gets up. Now, if Marshall gets one, then Andrew Anderson has to say to himself, okay, there's no way I can shut him out, but if I strike out, I force him to strike out, right? Okay. But now he's thinking, if I strike out, I win. Chris, that, that mindset has to change, no? Anderson, yeah. off wow. the mark to 10. This time from double A. Yeah. It does change the pressure overall, Randy. I think you're spot on. And in some cases, though, it turns into uh, a pressure thing where you have an opportunity to win versus an underdog situation where you're free to just kind of throw some shots and and tell yourself, oh, well, it probably doesn't matter, but just in case. Same result yeah. as he misses the two, trying to get cross tech to the 10 pan. And that's it. Marshall Kent has mathematically knocked off Anderson in this game in a wild finish. Sure was. With two 10 splits on well, that first shot. Anderson could have taken the lead. Finishes with 189. So Kent's going to climb the ladder. Anthony Simonson is next. Two-time major champ. 
I mean, talks about peaks and valleys in this yeah, match. That was a little crazy. Up, that was a little up and down, a little emotional roller coaster. Marshall's going to pick out a new ball and finish up. But he's already knocked off Andrew Anderson. Climbing the ladder. Simonson is next. Wild game. Marshall Kent had the front five, had a 55-pin lead, then the 210 open. Anderson had a chance to actually win that first match, but in the end, Kent hangs on. He'll take on Simonson next in our Group 2 semifinal step ladder bracket. Andrew Anderson joined by Chris Barnes. Andrew, you nearly pulled off the biggest comeback in the history of this building, and you told me what you were going to do, and you almost pulled it off. But what I really want to ask you about, last year you were the underdog and pulled off this miracle for the year run. Tell us about the difference in both expectations internally and externally between that and this year where you are the reigning player of the year. Yeah, I would say that uh, you don't actually tell yourself you feel it, but you definitely feel the expectations on yourself. And um, this year has been uh, an up and down battle. I mean, I kind of still feel like the underdog a lot of the time. And I think I have to have that mindset to be aggressive and go into tournaments knowing that I can win them. But uh, it's definitely uh, hats off to Balmo and all those guys. I mean, what Balmo does, uh, he's just a Achilles heel. Uh, uh, I, it's just an Achilles heel that you have, knowing that you're expected all these things and what what you can do with those is is amazing and it can be good or bad and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Good luck the rest of the season, Andrew. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right, Chris. Thanks, and we appreciate Andrew's time coming off the loss to Marshall Kent and two young stars of the game. Simonson Kent head to head. As we climb the step ladder toward Jacob Buttruff, the top seed lone lefty. Here's Simonson. Known as Simo, only 22 years old. Already six years as a pro. Six titles, two majors from outside. Dallas has got a strike, the two-hander. Real good bowler. Knows how to trick it up, knows how to play the lanes. Knows his equipment. This is going to be a much tougher match for Marshall Kent, in my humble opinion. But trapped on the pit. Not a great start for Kent. Marshall says he likes to work on keeping his upper body stable using video, and that's how he likes to work on his game. Also, says he's been working on his spare game. Since he won a title, 2017 Grand Casino Hotel and Resort, Oklahoma Open. That was in Shawnee. Do you know who he beat there? He did beat Chris Barnes in the final. <laughs> Sorry, Barnesy. <laughs> Ten yards for piling on. <laughs> Sorry, Barnes. 194, 188 <laughs> was the final. Well, hey, listen, day. when you make a hundred, you make a hundred shows. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna get beat by a few guys. It does happen. Ring and Ted been there for Kent. I mean, Chris, come on. If you only made three shows, we wouldn't be having this conversation. That was actually a, a Marshall pulled a rabbit out of his hat in that event. And the lanes were awful. And then I think he had to throw like the last four or five to uh, to beat Chris. And somehow he did. Ten pin. Put on a little magic show that day. He'd like to repeat the feat here in Vegas and win his fifth career title. Youngest ever to win a major at 19. Youngest ever to win two majors at 22 years old. Simons. His qualifying numbers through four games. Now it's single elimination. Looking good. Time now, Randy, for track technique. Let's break his game down. Well, he's two-handed, doesn't use his thumb, but he's very unique. And look at how low his head gets to the ground. I mean, it's almost parallel to his knee. And then from here, he really stabilizes his upper body really well. But look how deep that knee bend is, and then look how flat his back is. He's an amazing young man. And the stuff that he can do to a bowling ball, crazy. I think we'll see some more backup spares. Oh, you know it. That's incredible. Come on. Great start continues. Simo clearly is locked in. 
Chris Barnes, give me your assessment of the kind of bowler Anthony Simonson is. Well, really, of this youngest generation, I mean, the guy's under 25, he's probably the most versatile. Even though he's two-handed, he doesn't have a super high rev rate, but his ability to play up the lane, uh, play, you know, adjust his speeds, play different angles, and even back up. He's won a title now throwing a backup ball. It is crazy how many different things he does at this age. Chris, a quick sidebar. Johnny Petraglia told me two years ago that one of the two anders will learn how to throw a really good backup ball, and it'll change the game. He's certainly on track to be the first. Good prediction. All right, Marshall Kent goes back over to the left lane, or as I like to call it, Ring Tenville. He struck two out of three. Three straight for Simonson to begin this match number two. Former rookie of the year. He told us this week his physical game, mental game, is at its peak right now. A little time off. And his work, as Randy talked about, a lot of video technique, a lot of coaching. Coach Mike Jazz now always working with Marshall and keeping that upper body stable. You don't want a lot of tipping and tilting and all that does is change the fulcrum of the swing. For frame, all tan in the pit. Marshall is pumped. Let's take a look at his upper body here and see what kind of movement we see. So it leans forward as he gets started. Again, that classic position. And then that's where you need it to be stable. I like that. The shoulders actually move a little bit forward at the point of release. You don't want them pulling back. That would be bad. That's what I used to do. Simonson looks for the front four. Flirting with a 7-10, just a 10-pin. And of perfection in this game. But he's still locked into that 1-3 pocket, as he told us pre-PBA Tour Finals. I never want to give away that pocket. Didn't happen much in qualifying. Number three overall seed in this event. These are win probability numbers. 58% for Simonson. He's got the 10-pin. As we talked about, Randy, the two-handed backup ball on the spare. In qualifying, did it twice. Yeah, well, he got a little lucky here, even though that is pretty impressive, I will say. But he made this 310 like he was shooting a 5 pin Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> Just incredible, young man. That's all. Here's his arsenal. Idle pro. Seven to ten, the last two to go down, but it's a strike. Ten goes late, but it goes. Seven was there for a second. Now Marshall Kent steps up here in the fifth, and he can actually take the lead. By one with a strike, if he can get the turkey here in the fifth frame. Perfect so far in the right lane, two for two. Scout across the deck, got number 10. It is our Barbasol close shave of the day. Well, if you like massive flying messengers, swipe right. <laughs> That's what that was. Wow, was that filthy. I used to throw, I used to throw messengers like that. Said me, never. Win probability number is it? Nearly 58% now for Kent. Takes the lead. Heading toward the midway point of match number two. Marshall Kent. Steve Wright. I'll tell you what, he busted a move on that one at the bottom of the swing. He got all of that and then some. Marshall Kent working on a four bagger. He's got an 11 pin lead. And he's doing nothing but making pins do a, a dance in the pit.
Here is our Ebonite flashback. The lanes at Red Rock have been home to the PBA's most prestigious tournament, the Tournament of Champions, and has seen the highs and lows. Often in the same event in 2011, Mika Kribbenemi knocked off Tom Doherty 299 to 100 in the semifinal match, just missing the perfect game by one. Went on to capture the title and largest prize in PBA history, $250,000 with a 269 207 win over Tom Small. And what a day for Major Mika. Great history in this building. Simonson down 11 to Marshall. Ken is joined now by Chris. Marshall, last match you had somebody playing to the right of you. This time you have somebody to the left of you. Does that change your strategy at all? You know, not really. I looked at where, how far left he was playing him. And um, when someone's left of you, you have to. First time ever PBA Tour Finals, we've had the players do live interviews in match. He right. Simonson. <laughs> Got all of that one. One pin match through six. Excuse me, one pin game. Youngster from Little Elm, Texas in the Dallas Metroplex since 2018. And top five finishes. The eight bowlers in the PBA Tour Finals over the last two years. It's their point total that got them into this invitational event. Nicknamed Simo. The SBC Masters in 2016. Players' Championship in Columbus this year. Two majors already for Simonson. Almost a huge payday in Portland, Maine. Lost to Chris Prather, eventual champ in the inaugural PBA playoffs. Is this guy ever good? Yeah! And retakes the lead. So if Simonson strikes out, Marshall Kent strikes out. You know what the, the final score would be? It's going to be Kent 280. Simonson 279. Oh boy. We love those great finishes. Again, steps up, looking for the five bagger in the seventh to go back up by one. Win probability now up with Simonson nearly 58%. It's gone back and forth. Can Marshall answer? Bringing 10 oh, pins. That was really good, too. Really good. Out of the commercial break, and Marshall aces that shot. Strike streak over at four. Single pin spare conversion here in the seventh. There's the 10, there's the mark. Stat pack in our 10 pin match. Simonson, lone non strike with fourth frame, nine spare. That's been it. Otherwise, six strikes for Simo. Crunch time now. Go. Ten goes down. And his mom loves it. I wonder if that's his brother sitting next to uh, to mom, but this was a, another nice 16-pound messenger thrown by Marshall Kent. And that's big because now it sets up the ninth and 10th frame. He's, he's needing Anthony Simonson to not strike in either the eighth, ninth, or 10th. Simonson can tie it up here in the eighth. Looks for the four back. Simo, there it is. ringing. Oh. Yeah, and now we're, he's he, he's right back in this. Marshall Ken is, and with a spare, it's it's a nine-pin match, and Marshall Ken can actually strike out and shut out 
Anthony Simonson by one pin. Right lane has now turned into the ring 10 lane. It's gone back and forth, hasn't it? Oh, that hurts. Oh, man. You know what that was? Tough. That, that, re pin. that reminded me of the old Sanford and Son. Where Fred was like, Wheezy, this is a big one. I'm coming to join you. Jacob Buttriff, our top seed in this group and the overall leader in qualifying. Lone lefty. We'll take on the winner of this one between Kent and Simonson in the race to two match. Got to win out of two games. World's tied. Ninth and tenth frame roll off to determine the winner. So only four non strikes this game, all four of them 10 pins. Response for Simonson. All right, well, he's done his job now in setting up his chance to strike out in the 10th frame. Marshall Kemp must do the same. If Marshall strikes out from the ninth frame on, remember he's working on a strike in the eighth, Marshall will shut out Anthony Simonson. Light hit and the washout with a 1 6 10. Looked like he got really fast. Ball got to the bottom of the swing early and then he just missed it. Didn't catch it at the bottom, it had nothing on it. Let's go down to Chris. Back to Chris. Chris, what did you see on that shot there? No, I think you hit it spot on. Trajectory wise, is actually okay, but he knew off his hand. You get quick early, and it, it was off his hand before he ever caught it at the bottom. And uh, uh, it happens to him every once in a while. This is a really bad spot for it, though. Just going to take a re-rack. Chris. Call for a re-rack with a 23 pin deficit, Randy. Sorry. Chris and Dave, I used to call that the, the wet bar of soap release. It's like a wet bar of soap coming out of your fingers, like all three fingers come out of the holes at the same time. I know that because I was really good at doing that. Yeah. I think Big I read miss. that on the application for the Hall of Fame. Oh, <laughs> uh, that was a compliment. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> I think it was. That was. A couple Hall of Famers with me here on the broadcast. Again, from Vegas, third ever PBA Tour Finals on CBS Sports Network. He had a much better career than I did. Like, way better. You guys were both awesome. No, no, way better. And you're still awesome. Wow. How many ring and tens have we seen? That's the, that's the gut punch there after what happened in the ninth frame. Bad shot and shoot two ten. Hey, Chris, how many times has this happened in your career where, you know, okay, an errant shot, and then, all right, well, give me a little life, and then you, you ace it, and you leave a ring and ten or something else? Yeah, the dog piling, as we've seen in the right. show at times, uh, <laughs> tends to happen. And, uh, uh, you know, the real tough one for him is the one in the seventh frame, where I don't think he would change a single thing about that shot. And uh, and it put him behind, and, and it's all been kind of uphill since then. That's a great point. Did that shot, that shot looked like it was aced, and just a ring of 10. Simonson needs to stay upright and alive. And he'll make it to the final match against Jacob Butcher. Keep it on the lane. He'll do that. He'll get 10. He'll get a win. Done. And Marshall can. You saw how fortunate he was. As he rolls a 214, he's packing up. Come back to the handshake. Buttrup next in the race to two, group two championship for Simonson, who sat on the bench and Ladies watched and Marshall, Marshall Kent. Kent free fall. Went off the rails for Kent. And in the end, Simonson able to take advantage and advance. Two-hander, Anthony Simonson is through. 
to the Group 2 Championship match. The race to two. Take on Jacob Buttriff, the lefty, and the top seed coming up. Time again for Go Bowling with Randy off the Go Bowling Facebook page. Here's a question from Boris Bent. When throwing a shot, should I feel more pressure on my ring finger or middle finger, or should they be equal, Randy? And your answer is? That's a great question, Boris. So when I'm using my regular release, I want equal pressure on both fingers. But here's how you could trick up your ball roll. The middle finger's for more roll, the ring finger's for more turn. So if I want to get around the ball more, I dig my ring finger in, and I barely lay my middle finger on top of that hole. Vice versa, if I want to try to roll it, I'll dig in my middle finger and barely put my ring finger in. So just changing the pressure in your two fingers will change your ball roll. I love it. Good advice. Hope that helps Boris go bowling with Randy and the Go Bowling Facebook page. And we're ready for the group two. Race the two championship match between two young superstars on the PBA Tour. Simonson, Buttrip coming up next. Head to head. We can't wait. Ready for match three, race to two. Returning to the winner of this group two in our stepladder semifinals, Buttriff and Simonson. The race to two match is on the way. Buttriff, the top seed. Malone Lefty at PBA.com to check out all the latest officially licensed PBA apparel and merchandise. Items include PBA League, Signature Series, and three quarter sleeve t shirts, PBA retro line, and a host of other unique designs. So get shopping today by heading to the PBA.com website, clicking on the shop PBA link on the main menu. Some great items available. Great match coming up here. Buttriff Simonson. Hey, did you mention that it's a race to two? A couple times. Okay, well, that's good. See, our viewers need to be informed. Thank you for that, Dave. Simonson. <laughs> Ten in the pit. Starting left. A lot of hook. Chris Barnes, I put this to you. Can Anthony Simonson outstrike this young man right here? It's really in Jacob's hands. If he does what he's been doing, I don't think there's anybody who can outstrike him. A short format, though, I mean, anything can happen, but but Anthony's probably going to have to shoot, I would say, 259, 258 or better one of these two games to get into a roll-off. There's CB's prediction. He's a pretty smart guy. He would he's know. Been, he's been spot on all weekend. I mean, great he, take he would again. Know. Strong take, Chris. A pin. Got it. Good start for the youngster. He, he now in... Arizona living originally from Vegas. You, you didn't have to say eight pin. You could have said single pin. Single pin. Just throwing it out there. Sure. Numbers for Buttrip, overall leader, Randy, in qualifying through four. Yeah, averaged almost 250 for four. That'll do it. Yeah. And I mean, completely ran away from the rest of his group. That is pin action. Yeah, he, 10 back. He gets a urethane ball to hit pretty hard, that's for sure. And he gets the, a urethane ball to cover a lot of ground. Ball change for Simonson. I'm being told only on the right lane he's going to an MVP. In second frame with a ball change. Why is that rack so tight? Pin explosion somehow misses the 10 pin. Rack is so bad. Huh. Chris Barnes, uh, you make a ball change, you execute, you love everything about it until the end result. What goes through your mind? Well, at that point, you have to decide whether you want to go back to what you were doing in the last match or move off of that somehow. Uh, I'm not a big believer in throwing, standing in the same spot, throwing the same shot and hoping for a different result. Uh, my guess is he likes the way this ball reads the middle more. It lets him move a little further left without fear of missing the lane to the right. I think he'll just move a little bit further left and throw it slower because that's kind of, that's his go-to move. Interesting. 
I guess he's going to stay with the ball he started with on the left lane. Third frame, oh. got a ball. It's a great start for Anthony Simonson. Just inside of fourth arrow, and ends up in the perfect spot to knock all 10 in the pit. Response time for Buttrick. Six pin. Well, he leaves that single pin in the first frame and then the six pin here. So just a little heavy, those shots on the right lane. That spare ball takes care of the six pin. Simonson's in here, curving it pretty good, and Jacob Butcher is kind of doing that slow wheel. And their lines are crisscrossing at some point, but not affecting one another, I don't think. Arsenal for Jacob. Hammer, purple, urethane. Wow. Dead flush on the money. I mean, I don't know if it ever gets boring for Jacob when he looks at his bag of arsenal and goes, all right, which pur purple ball should I throw? But my goodness, he, he sure makes him look good. Chris and Jacob will discuss. Jacob, are you throwing old faithful right? The yes. purple hammer? What's going on in this right lane? Uh, so they're definitely a, a, a lot more, so, as you would say, softer than they were the last uh, yesterday. Um, already having to play, play them a little bit different. So I'm just going to go out there and uh, make the move I need to kind of keep up my ball speed and uh, just see what the result is. By softer, you mean more hook on the left? Yeah, there's definitely there's a lot more earlier friction than what I saw yesterday. All right, good luck. Thanks, guys. Great to talk to Jacob. Thanks, CB. Live breakdown. Whoa, it's a whiff. Open frame. Must just be syndrome of ball with my back. Unbelievable, honestly. Um, I, th I know that after Anthony threw Thank that you. shot, he came back and looked at the rack because I think he's going to probably change to another bowling ball on that right lane. That last shot, that ball went too far down the lane before it came around the corner. And I think he's off, he's running off to grab another, grabbing another ball, nope. Took a re-rack, yep, did take a re-rack. All right, blue ball in left lane, good. Right lane, not sure about yet. Instead of being down one pin, now he's down by 12. Trying to recover, does so nicely. But still upset about the single pin spare conversion miss. After about 12, chance to increase that to a 22 pin lead here in the fifth as he works on a strike. Overall two seed in this event. here along with his stepdad great support for Jacob as we mentioned he's born and raised in Vegas he moved to Arizona about six years ago so he considers himself a native of Las Vegas back home here trying to win the PBA Tour Finals for the first time in his career he grew up 15 minutes from here that was the Red Rock Lanes well win probability up to 82 plus percent for the lefty. Six. Up 32 pins midway point for Jacob Buttriff, the hometown hero.
against young Anthony Simonson. We knew it'd be tough for anyone to catch this lefty after leading qualifying. He's looking good in this match so far. Jacob Buttriff, the southpaw, up by 32 pins here. In the race to two, match number three, group two semifinals. The attack at one, group one. And awaits the winner of this in the championship match. Let's see who wins the PBA Tour finals crown in 2019. Simon sends some work to do. Four pin. Well, he went back to the ball he started with on that right lane, and this time it's over hooks and goes a little bit high. And remember, he did miss this, the fourth frame. Last time he was up on this lane, but Chris came over during the commercial break and made a great point. He said that, you know, Anthony's a, a really good spare shooter, and I agree with that. He said, but he was actually changing balls in his mind while he was shooting the four pin. So basically just a lack of concentration, didn't focus enough. And that's all it takes is a, a little hiccup like that, and next thing you know, you're missing an easy single pin spare. Fourth last year, Allen Park, Michigan, outside Detroit. By Jason Belmonte, but Belmont will not be champ this year. Seventh frame, Simonson. Familiar four pin. That one there looked like he rolled it a little bit more, and the ball actually started to read the lane a little sooner. Let's take a look here. That looked a little more up the back to me. I don't know. Chris has got a better vantage point. Chris, what did you see? Well, either way, I think what's happened now, I mean, one more strike from Jacob in this frame, and this is turning, he's going to get a three-frame three practice session before the second game. So, uh, yeah, he's trying to figure out how to get the ball to face up like he wants to and get it through the pocket both. And uh, I'm not sure Jacob's going to get any more chances. Either. 249 might be a low possible score for Jacob this game. As Chris correctly predicted, another strike for Buttrup and a huge lead here in game one. And it, it just seems to me that when Jacob gets it going, it's like every shot ends up in the same spot. Like, watch where this one ends up. Like, they all look like they end up right there, like perfectly in the one two pocket. It's not like one's tripping a six, one's going light, one's a rip rack, messenger. They all seem like they end up in the same place. Wow! I mean, do you catch what you, are you picking up what I'm laying down, Dave? I'm picking up what you lay down, man. Now those pins have absolutely no chance. None whatsoever. Well, I, I, I've got a question right after this shot for Anthony, for Chris. Oh, it's coming right now. Four through the middle. Chris, at some point, does Anthony Simonson look at throwing a backup ball? And if he's going to do it, it's going to be in the next two frames, I think. We might see one in the 10th frame just to give a look at it. Spinning and leaving the 4-7. A different way to make that one. And look at that lead, guys, for Buttrip on the bench up to 71 pins. Yeah, game one's history. Yeah, he's running all the options through his head right now, trying yeah. to decide what, what he thinks is going to give him the best chance to shoot a big game in game two. Did you see him throw any backup balls in practice? No. Okay. wonder why. I wonder why he wouldn't look at that and just have another option. I'm not sure there's actually enough hook out there. Really? Oh, he's doing it right here. Nope, he's not. Wow. Well, y'all wish me luck for sure next game. You sure shouldn't look at it? Remember, hit eight. You're going to see it right now. Two out, of, two out of his last three games bold have been in the 160s. His last game qualifying 164. Uh, he's in jeopardy of not shooting that this game. Looked like he moved right on that shot. Yep. He better find something quick. But it looks like there's no chance of him throwing a backup ball. Wow. He is limping to the finish here. Yeah, 
Essentially, this one's over. 83 pin lead. <laughs> I mean, goodness. 93 pins. And he will advance to win this one in the race to two. It would be like the same deficit as if I pulled you. <laughs> Randy, you could beat me left-handed. <laughs> Easily. It would not uh, be. No, we'd actually. I am left-handed. I mean, you bowling left-handed. Yeah, That's right. me bowling right. left-handed. We'd actually have a good match left, left, lefty to lefty. You think? Yeah. yeah, I think we would. I think we'd be close. I doubt it. <laughs> no, I think we would be close. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Wow. Just crushing that one-two pocket. Yeah, you said it. 249 <laughs> if he spare strikes. I mean, the pins are a blur, Randy. Even in slow motion, the pins are a blur yeah, with Randy that ball reaction. A, he makes a great point. Every shot goes flush. Once he gets a feeling, it may not go to the same board. He has such good feel, though. They all go high flush. And he has supreme confidence once he sees it that an eight-bagger's coming. Oh, yeah. Pretty soft-spoken young man, though, really. He's a really nice Great kid. Great kid. So he it's, he that's, really it's is. not the attitude on or off the lanes. It is just the knowledge of how good he is. It's supreme confidence. We saw him pre-match, and he said he felt as relaxed as yesterday during all the qualifying when he led all eight of these great bowlers. Eight of the best bowlers in the world are here to begin the PBA Tour Finals. Simonson looking for answers for the next game in the race to two, match three, trying to determine the winner of group two. More on the way from Vegas. <laughs> Strike streak of six straight for that guy, Jacob Buttrip, and no problem in game one. Over Anthony Simonson, 249 to 157. Simonson, Barnes, lane level, guys. Anthony. A little bit of shades of qualifying at the end where it looks like the lane kind of goes away, breaks down the front, you were saying, but it gets a little tight down lane. What do you have to do now in this game, too, to give yourself a chance? Uh, yeah, make a couple good guesses and uh, you know see where they take me. Jacob's probably going to bowl another good game. He's, you know, his five other games have been pretty good. Uh, I'm going to move back, to move my feet to the right a little bit, move my eyes in, probably pick the ball speed up and see if I can just kind of control the one three and hopefully get a couple extra hits. Stronger ball, cleaner ball, what are you looking at? Uh, a little bit cleaner, uh, a little bit of control. IQ Emerald's probably going to be the option. All right, good luck. There you go. All right, guys, thanks. Randy, your thoughts on his adjustments coming up? Yeah, I mean, it's an educated guess, but he's got to guess quickly and get lined up quickly. And if he doesn't guess correctly and his ball doesn't hit the pocket, he's got to avoid open frames. So, I mean, he's he's the one thing about Anthony Simonson is he's going to go with what he believes in and he's going to commit to it. The youngster with some good Team USA experience. Want to start game two. Lather. Smokes the rack. I mean, Lather, wow. rinse, repeat. Wow. They all look they all look the same. It's incredible. We heard the game plan with Chris Barnes. Good start executing that for assignments in a game two. Well, that, that was the first, and you know, we saw the same thing kind of happen to O'Neill, and O'Neill decided to move in and hook that right lane, and his first shot struck, and then the next two go through the nose. He ends up moving a bunch of boards, so that first guess is pretty good. Now, based off of that and the knowledge that he has for the left lane, I wonder what this one's gonna look like. Yeah, I think he's really on to the right game plan. He, t he talked about it, it being early hook in the front. This ball is cleaner through the front. The smaller core won't make him go away from it so far. So he shouldn't see as much wiggle down lane. EJ did a similar move and it worked great. This is a great start for Anthony. Gives him a chance for sure. Couldn't be better, CB. He's right in that one three pocket. Two perfectly placed shots to begin this game. But Buttriff has done nothing but mow them down through four games of qualifying and now into the group two final case in point 
Weeknights at 6 Eastern, join host Adam Shine for a full hour of energy, fuel analysis, and powerhouse opinions on everything happening in the world of sports. It's time to shine on CBS Sports Network. Uh, have you have you gotten any farther along with the Randy and Rhino show yet? You mean the Rhino and Randy show? It's not the show I was thinking of. <laughs> Never mind. I'll work on that. <laughs> I'll email you. Okay. How is he doing this, Randy? How is he repeating shots? He's good. Hey, how do you like your strikes? Stuffed. It's just another one that's just like neck high. Yeah. Completely comfortable. Simonson. Nice response. He's not going anywhere just yet. He pulls this one off. It's gonna, it, it could be one of the best come to, comebacks all year. To have zero. I mean, he just shot 157. To have nothing and then go through his entire arsenal that he brought here for this event. And then go, okay, well, I think uh, my only chance is to do this. And he starts with the first three. Lost to the eventual champ, Chris Prather, at the inaugural PBA playoffs. Six up, six down for these guys in game two. Yeah. Ten down late, but down it goes. Well, he had a messenger and then the six pin that kind of gang tackled the ten. Watch this. There goes the six. Ankle bites the ten pin and then the head pin comes over for a little insurance. Wow. It's a clinic. <laughs> yeah, I just over looked, and over again. I just looked over at Chris Barnes and he's he's shaking his head and then he looked at me. I mean, Chris Every shot's high flush. You guys are really impressed, huh? I mean, they're just all high flush. They just split the 8-9 over and over and over. It, they don't go the same board, but he's, he, you know, he's got such good feel, and when he gets it going, they, they just do this. Can't do it again? Why not? Why not just keep this roll going, young Jacob Buttreff? Spectacular. Chris. You're standing directly behind that pair. Is he throwing it all over the lane? No, not all over the lane. That one was in a little bit, but okay. it was in and rolled. It, I mean, he just nets it out a little bit. It's, uh, you know, there's been some guys that really used to do that very well in Leto, uh, you know, and some guys that kind of drift a little bit differently and it nets out. It, he knows he got away with a little one there, and now my, the rest of them will get to the spot he wants to. Can we stay perfect? Yes. How about this start for each of these guys? Five up, five down, each the front five. And, and my point of, the, of that question to Chris about Buttriff is, if he's throwing it all over the lane, how is it that that ball's ending up in the same spot every time? Okay, so my point is, is that, okay, so he missed by an inch in on the last shot, and it held pocket and, and went flush. But to me, it looks like he's, repeating very, very well. Yeah, those aren't big misses there. I mean, the one thing Anthony's got going in his favor is he is a big time action guy. He loves this moment. The moment doesn't get too big for him. And now he's in it and got a little bit of a look. This, this could be a great one coming down the stretch. Anthony Simonson, 22 years old. Jacob Butcher, 25. We forgot some bowling. Come on. Yeah. Halfway home for Simonson. Yeah, crack up at a six pack for Simo because what a turn of events for him. Normally we would go to break at this point, but we do not want to mess with a mojo and throw off their rhythm. So we're going to stick with live coverage here as they both bid for a 300 game. Six for Buttrip. Can he match it? Of 
course he can. It, it looks like there's a bungee cord attached to the seven pin, and then when the six, when the uh, four pin goes to the sidewall and hits the seven, it's like somebody's just yanking this big giant bungee cord or rubber band to pull the seven pin off the deck. Watch it, all the way to the left, and see it. It's the same look of the pins every single time. Looking for the front seven. No, six pin. Mm. Yeah, I don't think he liked that one, Chris. He's kind of grabbed it a little bit, maybe. I think he knew that one early. He was, he knew he got all of that one after the last one he went. I mean, that's as close to missing the locket, which right. wasn't even close. It was right. Snap the seven out. Sure. He got all the next one. No spare ball, no problem. Hooks into the six pin. It has his mark, but Simonson is still perfect. Wow, <laughs> what a match here in game two. After Jacob just blasted Simonson in the first game. Not competitive. Looks from the front seven. He's already halfway home to a perfect game. Oh, hook. Tan pin. Somehow, the shrapnel avoids the tan. Unlucky. What a beautiful shot. And then this flying messenger that goes in front. I don't know if the head pin got redirected by another pin. Yep, yep. it looked like it did. Otherwise, that would have been seven in a row for Simo. All even. Those eyes shifting everywhere on his way to the foul line. Again, a must win for Simonson. And then we would have a ninth and tenth frame roll off. The race to two. Simo's eighth. Strikes again. No 300 game, but a tremendous match here from Vegas. And now we'll take our break from Red Rock Lanes, the PBA Tour Finals on CBS Sports Network. Great finish of this game coming up. Maybe a 19th, 10th frame roll off as well, if needed, in the race to two. Go to Channel X60 to order premium networks. Even Buttrip Simonson in the second game. In the race to two, Buttrip Randy was incredibly consistent. Each the front six, Jacob just hit that spot in the one two pocket time and time again. Yeah, Chris and I both commented on how each shot looked the same, and if it wasn't high flush, it pretty much knocked the seven pin crazy. Uh, but as you can see, they all pretty much look the same. It's a good problem to have. Is it ever? Easy win game one for Buttrip over Simonson. Game two, a different story. It is interesting as he works on a spare into the eighth frame. Top qualifier by 136 pins in four games here at the PBA Tour Finals. Averaging 250 a game. Remarkable run for Buttrip. And wants to finish off group two. Seven pins. First one of those we've seen by Buttruff today. You know, the average age of the players on this show is 24 years. How about that? Young superstars yeah. of the PBA Tour. Great to see it. And those of you that don't know, Jacob Buttruff actually uses a conventional grip, which means that his fingers go into the finger holes to the second knuckle with no inserts. And I don't know if, I don't know if anybody else on the tour that they use a conventional grip. Chris, do you? No, I don't, uh, I don't know of anybody in a long time since Sergeant Easter 
uh, in the break, I talked with Sean Ryan, uh, Jacob's ball rep. He said he's going to move. He didn't move after the last high flush. Then he went for, for six pin, and misses a move here. And there obviously was just not quite enough. Another half to one more as he leaves the stone eight. This isn't the first one he's left today. It's Look crazy that. how much power he creates with the urethane ball. I know, it really is. No problem. Boys, Mark, two pin match here. Simonson's foundation frame forthcoming. Simonson calls for his second and final re -rack. Every once in a while on this right lane, the three feet gets just a little bit in. That might have been with the tenitis that uh, Randy referred to earlier happening. This one's better. Win probability now up for Simon early 58%. I didn't get much better than this. Second pin from the right, just slingshots around the 10. And I don't know if it's a good thing or not for Simonson to finish on the left lane. But nonetheless, he can believe double and nine and win this game. It'll give him 258. Bunch of max score, 257. That's what he needs, a shutout. Budruff on the bench here, that's two it. and nine. That's a lot. That's what I said. Just reiterating with the graphic <laughs> and confirming. <laughs> Big shot here. Yeah, that yeah. one for Simonson. Yeah, a little can opener action there. And the reason why I say you know, I'm not so sure you want to finish on that left lane is just, it, it gets a little it snug down lane. You can see that ball kind of fighting, almost like it's trying to hook uphill, you know? At least you know the right lane's gonna curve. Or, I'm sorry, hook. Just can't leave that alone, Ken. I can't. Let's strike a nine. Listen, if we take a survey, survey all the players, and the players come back at, to me and they say, no, Randy, it's hook, then I'll, I'll drop curve forever. that shot needed to a nine has two and now nine pins to wrap up this game and in this race the two sent us to the ninth tenth frames we'll roll off to determine the winner of route two Chris quickly does Simonson make a move or does he just keep does he do exactly what he just did the last two shots exactly the same thing nine is plenty to win so he doesn't need it to get it flush he just needs it to pocket. He's nine. Has ten. Has a win. Two fifty-nine and a winner. Anthony Simonson rolls a two fifty-nine. At the top qualifier, Jake the Buttruff, and the race to two is tied one-one. Sets up a dramatic finish here in Vegas at the PBA Tour Finals. And Barnsley called it. He said two fifty-eight or better to win. He was right. Well, he was right if. Jacob would have struck out, which he probably would have if he had a chance to win. So he'll be in the 230s unless he makes the 7 9. Seven, nine. Tough. The hammer, tough spare replay. In fact, moments ago with Jacob Butcher. Yeah, let's see. This is the right-hander's equivalent to the 810. And the last time we saw that made was Anthony Lavery Spar. Can't remember the last time a lefty has made a 7-9 split, if ever. Time now for the ninth, 10th frame roll-offs. Let's go to our tournament director, Kirk Von Kruger. Ladies and gentlemen, by PBA rule, this match must be decided by a ninth and 10th frame roll-off. 
Jacob Buttrift's the higher seed. He'll have choice of starting lane. I'm out of Anthony start. Anthony Simonson's going to start on the left lane. He's going to bowl one frame. Jacob will then bowl his two frames. Anthony will finish on the right lane with his final frame. Good luck, gentlemen. Chris Barnes wants to know if Anthony Simonson gets the Century Award from going 150 to 250. I want to know if Kurt Von Kruger got that coat he's wearing as a loner from Hugh Hefner. Got a few chuckles from those who heard you <laughs> here in the house. All comes down to this. Roll offs underway, two frames. Oh no. Two, eight, ten split for Simo. Gracious. Just came off that lane throwing three in a row and then a miscue. Come on, man. And that had to be a poorly executed shot. Yeah, out of his hand poorly. Well, if he gets two here, his max score, that would be 39. He's going to need some help from Jacob. Oh, backup ball. I forgot about he that. Tried the backup ball across the lane. Almost got the 10. Wow. So close. Great try at it with a backup ball. I forgot about that tool he, ha oh, he has in his bag. It's incredible to watch that. Yeah. Now Jacob's in the driver's seat. Night for him. Seven pin. Well, spare sp strike spare. He'll have 40, and he'll shut out Simonson. Nine spare, nine spare strike, and we could have a tie and go to another roll off. Conversion. Butcher tries to get himself pumped up for a big moment. One ball roll off if they have a tie here in the ninth, tenth frame roll off. And a race to two. One game each. That's how we break the tie. Three rack for Butcher. Think time to focus. The lefty. Seven pin. We have a chance for a tie, my friend. And that tie will be decided by a one ball roll off until that tie is broken. If they should tie again, just another one ball roll off until. Somebody strikes and somebody doesn't. Or I count wins it. Yeah. I count. Be careful. All right. He's missed a couple of those this season. Somebody talked about not meeting for them before the PGA Tour final started. Boy, if you're Anthony Simonson, you just got to feel like, man, maybe this was meant to be. I came back after a dismal first game. I made it a really good guess. I executed and then. I open here in this ninth and tenth frame, and Butchup goes back to back seven pins. Strike for the hometown hero. Boy, was that deep. Simonson needs all three to tie. Tell you, I don't know about you, Barnsey, but sure was easier trying to pry it off in a situation like this when I was younger. Got to be older, got a little tougher. Got to go. The first one. Got it. Yeah, sometimes, Randy. Uh, uh, 
experience is not always the best teacher. <laughs> you start to learn that bad things can happen. These two guys have had not much but success happen in their in their young right. careers. Two strikes to tie. Yep. It's all up to Simonson now. It's one we rack in the roll off, ninth, tenth frame. What a bounce back as Ray talked about after the tough first game where he was really struggling to find that one three pocket. Determine the winner of group two. So he takes on EJ Tackett in the championship show from here in Las Vegas. Exciting action. In dramatic fashion. Incredible. A hometown hero, Jacob Buttriff, wins the ninth, tenth frame roll off in the race to two to take on EJ Tackett in the championship match of the PBA Tour Finals. Rotation looked to be just a little bit different on this shot, and it got into the pocket a little soft. Jacob celebrates with his mom and stepdad. He'll face Tackett for the title in Vegas. It is time for the 2019 PBA Tour Finals Championship match. The Rocket right hander EJ Tackett takes on the Super Southpaw, Jacob Buttriff. At stake, a PBA Tour Championship. Fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. It is time for the championship match of the 2019 Barbazol PBA Tour Finals. We started this great event with eight bowlers. We're down to two. EJ Tackett against Jacob Buttrip. This will be a race to two points match to crown a PBA Tour champion and provide big prize money. After four games of qualifying, step ladder semifinals, it's championship match time. Tackett goes for his 13th career title. The young superstar from here in Vegas, originally Buttrip, goes for his eighth title. Welcome back to wrap up the 2019 PBA Tour Finals on CBS Sports Network. Dave and Randy, my Hall of Fame broadcast partner, joined throughout our broadcast as well by Chris Barnes. Fun to watch wow. that incredible finish with Simonson and Buttrip yeah. in the Group 2 Championship. Now we go on to just one player winning a PBA Tour title. How do you break down these two great bowlers in our finals? Well, Jacob is averaging over 250 for the tournament. Uh, EJ Tackett is, is right around 240, so that's 10 pins a game. But EJ Tackett certainly has the firepower to match Jacob Buttrip, but it's paramount for EJ Tackett to break down this pair. Remember, we just re-oiled once again. It's paramount for him to break down this oil pattern perfectly so he can get to the pocket consistently. All right, RP, time now for the Ebonite flashback, and we'll find out how these bowlers got to this point. EJ Tackett took on Bill O'Neill, and he got some nice breaks along the way. 265 starter. And a couple of nice messengers to go with it. Buttrip, well, 
He slaughtered Anthony Simonson the first game, beating him by over 90 pins, but Simonson came back, wins game two, found something, something, shot 259, and then went to a ninth and 10th frame roll off where Simonson needed all three in the 10th frame to tie. He got a double and nine, lost by one in the ninth and 10th frame roll off. It's been so great to have the inside of interviews. Lane Level from Hall of Famer Chris Barnes. Chris, I want your thoughts on this championship match now. Well, not only do we have the two heavyweights going, but these two guys, along with Bill O'Neill, had the best games on the fresh way back in qualifying. I expect this to be a battle, blow for blow, all the way through. And I don't know, I guess you have to give the advantage to Jacob, because he keeps doing it all the way through. But man, EJ is the one guy that might be able to match him on the fresh. Chris Barnes thinks about Butcher bowling so well. When we come back, we'll see which bowler, EJ Tackett or Jacob Buttrip, can win the third annual PBA Tour Final. And add to his resume, it unfolds next on CBS Sports Network. Buttrip Tackett, the winner, will take home the 2019 PBA Tour Finals title. This is going to be the battle of the purple balls going down the lane. <laughs> Nathan Hoosier State. All 10 down for EJ Tackett. Good start. Hey, did you mention this is the race to two? I did again. Okay, good. It's great. It's great journalism to keep the viewers informed. Just let you know. Hometown is currently Tempe, Arizona, but born and raised here in Vegas. We saw Mom Brickett step down here. Family and friends watching Jacob Butra for the 10 pin. Over the top 10 pin. Over the top. Is there a nickname for that one? I mean, ringing 10's around. Uh, no, no, I like Still Barnes' is over the top. Yeah, over no, the top 10? Over the top 10, over yeah. the top 10, that's cool. Put that on my list. Speaking of Chris Barnes, he spoke with the tour reps and got some insight. CB, what do you hear? Well, for Jacob, the one thing about urethane balls is they do get, they do have a lot of oil set on the surface and they tend to go straighter after a while. So they re-hit Jacob's urethane ball. They want to get four or five shots on it to tame it down and then he's pretty good, pretty good for the rest of the way. Uh, as for EJ, he's going to go back to the asymmetrical ball. He's going to stay there as long as he can. As soon as he starts to leave corner pins, he'll go back to the venom shock that he's used later on in the other step riders. So folks, what Chris means by hitting Jacob's ball, that means taking some sandpaper or a uh, Avalon pad and roughing up the surface and retexturizing the outside of the bowling ball. Exactly, 500 Avalon. Love it, guys. Inside the game, fantastic. The numbers for EJ, the group one semifinal. Ten pin. Hmm. Looked better than that. One of the reasons why he's using the asymmetrical bowling ball that's got a little bit bigger engine so that it's smoother off the end of the pattern. It's 42 foot Mark Rothwell pattern. And I don't think you're supposed to leave ringing tens when you have that look. Or at least that's the idea. He did there, didn't he? Ten and pin. Whoa, it's a whiff and a miss uh. and really open. Attack it. A Very time. surprising error. What are you doing, man? Oh, EJ. <laughs> Went to a ninth and tenth frame roll off. Almost had another roll off. Incredible finish for that match. Across the deck for the 10 pin. More revenge on the 10. The Barbazol. Close shave of the day has got to be that shot. A moment ago from EJ Tackett. Let's see if it's the head pin. It is. The head pin comes over and does the dolphin tail walk and slaps right into the 10 pin. Oh, my. Oh, my. That came back from Mesquite. It's a long way off. This is the first shot I've seen today from Jacob Buttrip that actually got that far to the left. And that thing peeled back. And then, of course, what happens in this sport? 
shots so often, you ace the next shot, and then you get gut punched. You ever been a batting practice of Major League Baseball team? I have. And you hear the, the sound. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're a big time golfer. You know about the sound, the mm -hmm. contact that the club face and the golf ball makes, the baseball bat, the baseball makes. When mm -hmm. it's really hit pure, yeah. that's what I'm hearing today with Jacob. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it just sounds so good. Yeah, that's because just about every Rushing one of his, the pins. Yeah, just about every one of his shots are high flush. Yeah, I, I was just going to try and talk to Jacob here a little bit. Uh, obviously, if uh, if he loses this match, it's not going to be based off a of ball reaction, but it might be based off of carry. Attack it. Reduce the deficit to 11, does that? Mark Roth, oil pattern Randy throughout the entire PBA Tour Finals. We had four patterns a year ago, just one this year. Yeah, and uh, EJ is going to be right in that middle zone and just feeding, probably feeding it out to no farther right than five. And Butcher, kind of similar. He can go out a little bit farther, maybe to three. And uh, the players, if they execute, they have a little room left and right. It's not a house shot by any chance, by any shot or means of the imagination, but let's take a look at EJ Tackett's arsenal, a jackal ghost. Looks for the turkey. Good frame. All 10 down. One pin match, or one pin game, I should say, here in game one. Race to two. Win two games. If it's tied at one each, you have the ninth and tenth frame Ross, which we saw in the group two final. Just inside a third arrow. Not really opening the lane up all that much early on. Fifth for Buttrip, works on a spare. Wow. <laughs> Guy sure strikes a lot, doesn't he? He said it was so great in our meeting with Jacob this week about winning that first career major. He's got three titles this year, only 25 years old. Hammer seven times on tour already. There's his arsenal. Hammer, sorry, Dave. Hammer purple urethane, or as Jake calls it, old reliable. Old faithful. Nice. Old faithful. Yeah. Jacob Buttrip with 11 pin lead halfway through game one. It's the race to two. We're at Red Rock Lanes here in Las Vegas. Stay with us. Underway, race to two championship match, PBA Tour Finals here in Vegas. Special thanks to Dennis Matthews, bowling operations manager at Red Rock Lanes with commissioner and CEO of the PBA Tour, Tom Clark. Great guy, Dennis Matthews. Thanks for all of his Help and assistance hosting us at CBS Sports Network. Back to Chris. Just gonna wait for EJ to throw this shot. Hey Jacob. You saw you leave a couple corner pins. What did you do to change that? How'd you get those out? So when I left the, the ring set in the fourth frame, I actually got it into the oil. Like I'm trying to get into the friction a, a little bit sooner, and that shot I just didn't get projected farther in the left. Uh, just getting into the friction as early as I can and. Uh, as the game goes on, I'm kind of trying to migrate a little bit more right and just kind of, as they call it, yam on the finger rolls a little bit. Just keep getting it more as it goes. Absolutely. All right, good luck. Thank you. You know, uh, if EJ Tackett would have made that 10 pin in the second, he would be leading by 11. And with a strike here, it would have been 21. Oh. Looks for the five bagger. He's off target a little bit. And the eight pin stands here for EJ. Well, that ball labored down the lane, and that has that, that tells me that he had to miss this one at the bottom. Just a bad release. I think if he really gets a hold of the finger holes, that that ball would come off of that spot and get back to the pocket. No problem with that single pin spare conversion. Back-to-back -back jacks for Buttruff here into the seventh. Up by 12, looks for the turkey. <laughs> Five over the last two years. That's how we got to the invitational only eight-player field of the PBA Tour Finals. 
the top points total over the last two seasons. Missed the mark. Haven't seen a lot of that over two days with Buttram. I'm looking over at Chris Barnes. Chris is looking at me, and I, I thought that was slow. And Chris is acknowledging that he kind of wrenched on it and threw it slower. The location looks fine, but it just looked like it was softer speed-wise. Yeah, I agree, Randy. I think he, you know, as he said in the interview, I think his, his look is to just jam on it, as he said, and just catch it more. And I think he did, he kind of doubled down. He threw it slow and he caught it more, and he wasn't ready to move in quite that much yet. Kick off every weekday morning with the most dynamic duo in sports radio as the boys bring up to speed all the action from the diamond of the gridiron with hot takes and top notch analysis. It's Boomer and Geo weekdays starting at 6 a.m. Eastern here on CBS Sports Network. Back to Jacob. And that looked better out of his hand. And all 10 back. Definitely looked faster and less yammed on. <laughs> It's a great term, Chris. I love that. Oh, the next time I go bowling, I'm going to try to yam on it. And a great finish with Buttrip and Simonson. Ball off in group two. Tack it. Nine pin up. I just feel like, like EJ's just a little stuck because of his power. You know, when he gets it up the lane just a little bit, he runs the risk of leaving that that's solid nine and watch the ball go right by it. But yet, if he tries to open the lane up a little bit more, he might flat 10 with that ball, then he has to change balls, and, and then who knows what happens with that less aggressive bowling ball that goes sideways down lane. Tight game continues. Now it's foundation frame time. EJ, with a strike. Yeah, real good shot there. Sets up the 10th frame. But Jacob can steal game one here by strike in the ninth, strike in the 10th, and nine spare, and he will shut out EJ Tackett. Crushes the one-two pocket. What well, open advantage. I think Man, the, his power. I think the last time I saw a lefty kick the seven out like that back in his prime was Parker Bowman the third. Nice. That is high praise to be compared with PB3. So he needs strike nine spare. There's a strike. Those pins had no chance. Mom Bridget's here, stepped out here as well. Family and friends supporting Jacob. We're up 15 minutes from here in Las Vegas. Now lives in Arizona. But he told us it was always great to come back home and he knows this bowling center very well. for Jacob Buttrip. All right, so how big now is that missed 10 pin in the second frame? Enormous. Game one goes to Jacob. If he spares there, he could have struck out. And it, it could have had a tie if Jacob strikes on his fill shot. What could have been, wow. Great finish, though, by Jacob Butcher. He takes game one. Rolls a 247. One of the world's best, EJ Tackett. Nice spare shooting. 
So EJ, some game planning to do. And we'll try to regroup in game two in the race to two and force a ninth, tenth, tenth frame roll off like we just saw at the end of the group two stepladder finals. Jacob Buttrup wins game one convincingly. One game shy now of winning the 2019 PBA Tour Finals title. One game complete. Race to two. Time, Randy, for the track technique. Well, let's take a look at the beautiful swing plane of EJ Tackett. I love how the swing goes out. And we're going to draw a line from the center of the bowling ball down and watch how it falls to the inside part of that line. Remember, pros work the inside part of the ball. Amateurs work the outside part. By that swing line going in that direction, it helps him get his hand in the perfect power leverage position. Notice the bowling ball right directly underneath his head. Love the breakdown, partner. Thank you, Dave. Awesome stuff. Game two, race the two. Buttrip, the leader, leads us off. Super Southpaw crunches Tan back into the pit. What a start to the game. And if you're EJ Tackett, you, you got to feel like you have no room for error. Jacob Buttrip's not going to let up. He's going to do a lot of this. And so I, I, I think the mindset going in is I've got to give him my best game. I can't afford errant shots. Attack it. Really good start of his own. That was a beauty. Runner up with TOC in Fairlawn, Ohio this year. After three titles in 2018. And let me just quick side sidebar. You know, Anthony Simonson came by and shook all our hands on his way. Thought out. that was great. Every, cool gesture. He does that every time he makes a show. Whether he wins or loses, he always comes by and thanks the announcers. You know who else did that? Chris Barnes would always come by. Really? In our days together. He never doing. thanked me. <laughs> thanked me a lot. <laughs> we appreciate the gesture, guys. E.J. Yeah! Tackett blisters the rack. Surprised the pin survived that. <laughs> I mean, that was something. Well, no shortage of power between these two players. Perfect pocket hit for Jacob. Chris Barnes, we know what Jacob's mindset is going into game two. What do you think EJ Tackett's mindset is right now? Well, it has to be a little bit more desperation, or not so much desperation, but urgency. And uh, he knows he has to come out strike early and often. I think that 258 number is probably still the number to beat. And so far, we've had four, four shots at all on the execution scale have been tens. Thanks, Chris. Let's see if we got another 10 here, CB. No, oh big my. four. Oh my. Oh my goodness is right. Converted once ever on TV, and we called it together. Yeah. Walter Ray Williams Jr. Do you remember Suburban where? Atlanta. Yep. I, I don't think anybody in the building saw this coming. I certainly didn't. Four seven stands. So no big four. Walter Ray's part of history is still intact. Winning as player in the history of the sport. Started off the PBA senior season this season by winning the first three shows, or first three events. 2005 Norcross, Georgia. Yeah. Last time it was done on TV. How about that? Yeah. That was a long time ago. <laughs> EJ. Late tap on the seven with a response. And that's exactly what you're supposed to do 
when you get an opening from your opponent. Talking Tackett. This is 2018. PBA Tour Finals. Top eight invitation only. The top eight in points on the PBA Tour over the last two years. Three titles. But look at all those top fives. Out of 31 events. It's a lot of, a lot of air time. Incredible competitor. And a chance to win his second PBA Tour Finals title in three years. Pretty good shot, but just doesn't drive through the 1-3 pocket hard enough to get the quitter 10 out. There's the 10 pin standing there like it's collecting unemployment. There's a 10, no worries. Look out. Out of all that, seven stands. Well, we're starting to see something that we didn't or we haven't seen in the last couple of days, and that's Jacob getting a little erratic. In his match with Simonson, it looked like he was just splitting boards, and now he's kind of all over the place. I don't know if it's fatigue or just lapse in concentration. Looking good for EJ. Look at that win probability. Tour Tough is right. 26 events, eight top fives, five titles, three have come this year. So Todd Clark talked about with Chris Barnes the race for player of the year with Belmont and Buttriff. Can Buttriff catch Jason Belmonte? Well, this might be the tipping point. Um, if he wins this event, he'll, he'll then have he'll then have four titles. Hang on. If he wins this event, he'll have four titles, tying Jason Belmonte. Belmonte has two majors, so so he gets kind of the skill in his favor. But you still have the U.S. Open, and we all know what Jacob Buttrip's done at the U.S. Open the last couple of years. <clears throat> Ten back. Flow Bowling is the exclusive home of the PBA's Extra Frame and features live streaming of all Go Bowling PBA Tour and PBA 50 Tour events. Up next on Flow Bowling is live coverage of the Storm PBA PWBA striking against breast cancer mixed doubles event from Houston. All the action starts on Thursday, so get your subscription today by clicking on Flow Bowling link at pba.com. Yeah, EJ, while well, earlier he was trying to get up the back of it to try and make it strike and get away from the ring tens. Now there's enough early hook. He's starting to circle it again. Those last two shots, both went right and didn't go through him. Barnes is up 37 now. He's pumped. And I think he likes going sixth. I think he likes going around it a little bit more, doesn't he, Chris? EJ Tackett has found his groove here in game two. 37 pin lead halfway through. Lots more to come from Vegas. Tackled by 37 here in game two. Jacob Buttriff won the first game in the race the two championship match here at the Barbazal PBA Tour Finals. Time now, Randy, for the Columbia 300 fun fact. The first two years of PBA Tour Finals on CBS Sports Network. Each featured Jason Belmonte and EJ Tackett in the title match. Tackett won the inaugural event we called together. 2017 Orlando Belmonte last year in suburban Detroit. How will this one unfold is the question here in Vegas. Well, it looks as though this might get time tied up and oh, go that'd to be a roll-off. That'd be fun. Jake down by 37 pins through six. <laughs> and
And again, the four with the kick save and a beauty on the seven pin. I like the hockey analogy. But right across the street from the Golden Knights, the Golden Knights. practice facility. Pretty yeah, cool. Golden Knights. Cup finals in their first season. It's yeah. awesome. For the turkey here, seventh frame. How will he respond? Just oh. like that with a strike. Hey. Good pin carry there for EJ Tackett, but he put pretty good touch on that last shot. Watch this. How could anything stand up after that assault? Message to us before this event started. He's really been bowling well. Just has not translated. We see some of his great stats into wins on TV yet. One of five to share that prestigious honor, including our Chris Barnes. Eight frame. Nine pin just won't fall that's somehow. You gotta be kidding me. Another nine pin for EJ Tackett. That's one in the eighth frame of game one. Looks for the four bagger. We could have a tremendous finish here. Here's the stat pack, Randy. Seven pin. Well, that one gets him in the ball game. Instead, it's a ring in seven. E.J. Tackett, max score 258. Butchup could have struck out for 252. But that ringing seven, it just made E.J. Tackett's life a whole lot easier here in game two. Remember, E.J. has to win this to force a roll off. Good shots, Steve, good shots. 231 max score now for Jacob Butchup. E.J. Tackett going at a 238 pace, which means if he went strike, spare, strike the rest of the game, that's what he would shoot. Yeah. With emphasis. Down by 27 pins. Yeah, he was kind of giving the seven pin a little stink eye there on that last <laughs> shot. There it is right there. A straight stink eye. Foundation frame now for EJ. Works on a spare. And the big lead. And a chance to win this second game. Send us to a ninth, tenth frame roll off. <laughs> Title. Wow. Big moment, big shot. Mark in good Strike count, that's all he needs. And we'll go to a roll off. The only player to make it to the championship match each of the three years for this event. EJ Tackett looking to win it for the second time. Buttruff, his first trip here, looking for his first win at the Tour Finals. Ten pin. He's got to make it. And remember, game one, he missed a ten pin in the second frame. Spare the chances, though, of him missing this ten pin. Minimal.
Right down the middle. Yeah, and that's what he's going to do with this next shot. He looked over at his tour rep and kind of gave it the down the, the middle sign. Nope, strike ball. Well done, we're going to a roll off. Ninth and 10. How about that? All tied in the championship match of the PBA Tour Finals. Wrapped up game two. Might be his lowest game of uh, yeah, ten turn only here. The way he has bowled so well, the overall leader of the qualifying through four games, top seed in group two. There's a ten pin. There's the game. Two thirty eight, two twenty. Game two. So now the ninth. Tenth frame roll off is forthcoming. Tournament director Kirk von Kruger will explain. Ladies and gentlemen, by PBA rule, this match must be decided by a ninth and tenth frame roll off. Jacob Buttruff will have choice of starting lane. I'm going to have EJ start. EJ will start on the left lane. He'll bowl one frame. Jacob will continue and bowl both of his frames. EJ will finish up on the right lane. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you, Kirk von Kruger. And I love the way you sport that smoking jacket. The golden pipes of Kurt. He Von is Kruger. the best. He's the best. Right? Love him. Known him forever. His son used to caddy for me on tour. Can you imagine that? EJ starts on the left. He's going to finish on the right. I'd love to get a Chris Barnes prediction. Here we go. Right. Tech frame roll off underway. Get it. Tap with a 10. And down it goes. Oh, Tomahawk 10. Everybody on their feet for this one. Watch this. Six leans on the 10. Yeah, I got to sleep. From the channel. Wow. Great react. Look at the crowd in the back. That's awesome. Butra responds. Whoa. He's got a seven pin to deal with, Chris Barnes. Well, it, it, hindsight is 2020, but uh, I, I think that, that prediction would be EJ based off that, off that getting the lean and lean the 10 over off the, you know, the six falling over on it. That swings the whole match. That's huge in a ninth and 10th frame roll off and then backed right back up by a great shot. Jake throws for the ring in seven. Advantage. Attack it. All right, CB, so there's the seven pin. Attack it with a strike in the ninth. Now the all-important tenth frame for Buttrip in our roll-off to determine who wins the race the two and takes home the title. Man, how big that ten pin that EJ Tackett carried. How big could that possibly be? I mean, yeah, looked like he wrenched on that one. Boy, he just gift wrapped this title to EJ Tackett. What happened there? Disaster. Split. The four stands. As we check our hammer, tough spare replay. L.E.J. Tackett, first ball 
If he were to get nine, he wouldn't even need a spare. Deep breath. Don't think about anything other than what it feels like to execute a perfect shot. EJ needs nine. He's got ten. And he's got the title from Vegas. EJ Tackett wins the 2019 PBA Tour Finals. Lucky title number 13 for the great EJ Tackett. One of the prettiest messengers you'll ever see in your entire life for a title. I'm funny. This is my grandpa. I lost him a week ago, buddy. Oh, I know you're the fifth. Thank you, man. Such emotion for EJ Tackett. <laughs> and time to celebrate with Barbasol as well with his tour rep. Oh, that's fantastic. He's happy to clean up. Here's the shot that won it for EJ Tackett. First title in 2019. Across the deck, that 10 pin. Had no chance. And AJ Tackett is a winner again. A little messy. Get that man a towel or a t-shirt or something to clean up. He wins his 13th career PBA Tour title today. We started with eight bowlers of the PBA Tour Finals. EJ Tackett was the fourth seed, and now Chris Barnes, he's the champion. Clark, and he's got some really nice hardware to give away. Thanks a lot, Chris. Spectacular performance, EJ. Awesome to watch. Uh, this whole tournament is so fun to watch. And on behalf of the PBA, uh, Barbasol and Red Rock Lanes, your second PBA Tour Finals trophy. Congratulations. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Now, EJ, after you threw maybe the dirtiest messenger I've ever seen <laughs> to win a title, you, uh, you looked up the sky. Well, who were you thinking? Um, we lost my, my grandpa, Smart, a week ago. And um, this, this one's for the whole Bickle and Smart family. Um, can't thank you guys enough for your support. I love my grandpa to death. He made it to the ripe age of 90. And he lived a great life. And I hope I can follow in his footsteps and be such a great man as he was. A very fitting tribute and a great champion once again our 2019 PBA Tour champion, E.J. Tackett. Thank you, Chris. Congratulations to E.J. Tackett. He wins the PBA Tour Finals. Title in 2019. So long from Red Rock Resort in Las Vegas now for Randy Peters and Chris Barnes for a final time. My Hall of Fame broadcast partner, Dave Ryan, saying so long.